What is the problem? Don't tell me the trains can't run in a little cold weather. Oh, no. The trains are fine, but this frost took us all by surprise, and some of the switches along the tracks are frozen. So what do we do? Wait here a week until the weather warms up? Oh, no, no. As soon as the switches are shifting properly, then we'll be up and running again. In the meantime, thank you all for your patience. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> what do you say? There! Oh, schemer, you fortune-telling genius, you. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I just love this man. Why, if it hadn't been for you and your miracle gizmo, I'd have lost my entire tomato crop. What miracle gizmo? I'm talking about your fortune-telling machine. Yesterday, I dropped by, popped in a nickel to kill time. And bingo, I got the nitty-gritty from the great beyond. A sudden change in the weather takes steps to avoid disaster. Which I did. Look, not that I'm superstitious, but I skedaddled back to my farm, covered my tomatoes with burlap, fired up the smoke pots, and boom! <laughs> boom, how boom? Boom comes the frost. Tomatoes all over the valley are freezing up, but my little beauties are nice and soft, thanks to you and your machine scheme. Are you saying that my machine actually predicted the future? From where I stand, that's the deal. Your machine really tells the future? Oh, no, Dan. It was just a coincidence. Shame on you, Miss Jones. I bring into the arcade a machine that can predict the future, and you sneer and jeer? Shame on you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, an actual machine that can predict the future awaits in my arcade. Who will be the first to put a nickel in? <laughs> Hey, slots, baby. It's like Snow Dome City outside. Right. What? What do you mean, so what? Like, if everyone is stuck at the station, that means more nickels in the box. And you know what that means. Uh, you said it. Oh, here comes someone. Man, make like the snow and drift. Right. Tito! Oh, Tito! Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know. The trains can't run, so the passengers are hanging out at the station, and that means they're putting money in the jukebox, right? Wrong! We gotta get upstairs and, and play, right? Wrong! They probably got ten different songs they want to hear, right? <laughs> Wrong ten different times. They're not putting money in our jukebox. They're putting money into Schemer's fortune-telling machine. What? That piece of junk? Yes, that piece of junk. Schemer told them the machine can tell the future. But, but that's wrong. That's right. Well, let's go. Oh, good news from a trusted advisor. Be prepared to act on it. Um, oh, well, obviously, the trusted advisor is me. Hey, oh. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Act on it. Now, give me some advice. I've been thinking about getting a new hairdo lately. Do you think I should do it? Definitely. <gasps> oh, thank you, Schemer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see you later, folks. Holy. It is freezing. I was outside helping Billy, but I had to come in. My nose was turning to ice. I've been helping up and down the line, too. When someone isn't looking, you know, and reaches for a tool and suddenly finds it's a little closer than he thought, 
That's me. I've given a helping hand by pushing it closer. It's the least I can do, considering. Considering what, Mr. Conductor? Considering that I know the person who's responsible for this sudden frost. I asked him not to do it, but he never listens. Told who? Jack Frost. Who else? He's the one who made it so cold out there. Well, thanks to Jack Frost, everybody thinks Schemer can see the future. Oh, that was just a coincidence. Jack Frost planned all this a long time ago. You know, it's funny, he loves to confuse people with cold weather, but personally, he's really a very warm individual. Well, right now, he could be Schemer's best friend. Do you think I should take that new job? Two. Yes. Should I win the lottery? Do uh, the possibility. Yeah. Uh, you You're right, Kara. All those people believe what Schemer's telling them. But that's what happens when you get impatient. You rush into something before you're really ready. Does Thomas ever get impatient? Oh, indeed he does. In fact, one time he got so impatient, he left his conductor behind. We conductors don't like to be left behind. I'll tell you all about it. Thomas the Tank Engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it is the most important part of the whole railway. His two coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, agree with him. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, they sing songs to each other. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, We're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them because they know he is trying to please Sir Topham Hatt. And they know, too, that if Thomas is cross, he's not cross with them. One day, they had to wait for Henry's train, which made Thomas very cross. How can I run my line properly if Henry is always late? He doesn't realize that Sir Topham Hatt depends on me. Thomas whistled impatiently. He wanted to leave, but he had to wait for Henry's passengers. At last, Henry came. Where have you been, lazy bones? Oh dear, my system is out of order. No one understands my case. You don't know what I suffer. Rubbish, said Thomas. You're too slow. You need exercise. The conductor blew his whistle and Thomas started so quickly that he left him behind. The conductor waved his red flag to stop Thomas, but Thomas was well on his way steaming out of the station. Come along, puffed Thomas. But Clarabelle didn't want to come. I've lost my nice conductor. I've lost my nice conductor, she sobbed. Annie tried to tell Thomas what had happened. We haven't a conductor. We haven't a conductor. But Thomas didn't stop till they came to a signal. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I don't know, said his driver. The conductor will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the conductor didn't come. Beep, beep, beep. Where's the conductor, whistled Thomas. We've left him behind, sobbed Annie and Clarabelle together. Everyone looked. And there he was, running as fast as he could along the line, with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. He was very hot, so he had a drink, and told them that Thomas had left them behind. I'm very sorry, said Thomas. We all make mistakes, replied the conductor. Look, the signal is down. We can go. Let's make up for lost time. Annie and Clarabelle were so pleased to have their conductor again that they sang, as fast as you like, as fast as you like, to Thomas all the way. They reached the end of the line quicker than ever before. At least Thomas said he was sorry. I don't think Schemer's sorry about anything. 
I'd better have a little talk with Jack Frost before this turns into bigger trouble. To think that Schemer can predict the future, and I didn't even think he could predict his own birthday. No, no, no. Now listen, Midge. Schemer cannot predict the future. Nobody can predict the future. No, his machine got lucky. Now everybody thinks that he has special powers. Well, he does. No, 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 Midge, he doesn't. It was just luck. Pure... Address me as El Schemo. El Schemo? That sounds like a city in California. But have it your own way. Are you really on the level? What level? My dear, quaint, small town busybody, El Schemo is on a level high above that of mere mortals. I have joined the cosmic dance of the universe. And now. For a mere nickel, you may hear me speak of the future. Future, 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 future. Oh, speak to me, future, future, future. Speak to me. Oh, We're... boy, now I've heard everything, everything, everything. Yes, I'm sensing some negative vibrations in the neighborhood. Let us be on our way. No, 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 no. Listen, schemer. <laughs> this is the most outrageous stunt that you have ever pulled. And listen to me, these people trust you, and you're cheating them out of their money. Uh, who dare mouth off to El Schemo? Now listen, El Cheeto, the passengers in this station are my responsibility, and I am going to tell them the truth about you. Miss Jones, my public, wait. Now listen, everybody, please listen. I'm sorry, but this man is a fake. He cannot predict the future, so please don't waste your money on how, him. How do you know? Yeah, what about the tomatoes? Yeah. Yes, Schemo. yes, what about the tomatoes? Schemo, Schemo, Schemo. Listen, Jonesy, there's no law against telling Schemo. a bunch of suckers Schemo. what they want to hear. Schemo. 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 Yes. Oh, your home is your domain. Nature will submit to your design. Oh. Does this mean what I think it means? Maybe, possibly, perchance. Oh, Schemerino, or whatever your name is. You see, I have got this big patch, poison ivy out back, which is driving me crazy. And if I read this right, this means I should go up there with my bare hands and pull it all out and show it who's boss. Am I right? Definitely. Oh! Ah, dog! Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me, oh, no. Stacy! No, no, no. Oh, Stacy! I got a date with my poison ivy. No, Midge, please don't listen to him. Boy, you three look as low as the temperature. Schemer's still at it, Mr. Conductor. I know, and Jack Frost thinks it's really hilarious. He says watching all these people falling for Schemer's story is even more fun than seeing cars get stuck in snowdrifts. Yeah, well, if only the trains would start running, then everybody would leave and this whole thing would just fade away. And then all those people out there who believed in Schemer will feel embarrassed. It's like the time when Gordon and Henry were embarrassed because they believed in all their bragging about themselves. But I suppose no one wants to hear about that. Of course we do. Well, then, what are we waiting for? Edward was getting old. His bearings were worn, and he clanked as he puffed along. He was taking empty cattle cars to a market town, but Edward was heading for trouble. Come on, come on, he puffed. Oh, oh, screamed the cars. Edward puffed and clanked. The cars rattled and screamed. Some cows were grazing nearby. They were not used to trains. The noise and smoke disturbed them. As Edward clanked by, they broke through the fence and ran across the line. A coupling was broken and some cars were left behind. 
He was at the next station before either he or his driver realized what had happened. When Gordon and Henry heard about the accident, they laughed and boasted. Fancy allowing cows to break your train. They wouldn't dare do that to us. We'd show them. Old Toby was cross. You couldn't help it, Edward. They've never met cows. I have, and I know the trouble they are. Some days later, Gordon rushed through Edward's station. Boop, boop! Mind the cows! Hurry, hurry, puffed Gordon. Don't make such a fuss! Don't make such a fuss, grumbled his coaches. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so, too. Whoa, Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Huh, said Gordon. It's only a cow. Shoo! Shoo! He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost a calf and felt lonely. She said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off! Be off! Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's conductor told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, looking for her mother. Percy will take her along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it secret, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, well, chuckled Edward. Two big engines, afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stopped so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. Okay, here's the plan. Oh, but it better work, because if it doesn't, things could be worse than they are now. Okay, you have to do Schemer! El Schemerino! Ah, uh, some of my lambs have returned home. Schemer! 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 You have got some explaining to do. I took your advice, and I pulled out that whole pack a poison yeah. ivy. Yeah. Well, it did not submit to my design. All it did was make me break out all oh. over. Yeah. Oh. Yes. And I had that hairdo you told me to get. And do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? I predict you're going to tell me. <laughs> El Schemo shall explain. explain. Silence, ordinary people. I shall now contact the grace beyond. The machine shall issue a note, and the great El Schemo shall interpret it. What do you want, El Schemo? <laughs> it's, a, it's a talking machine. You told these people lies to get their money. Shame on you. Well, I made a, I, I made a few guesses. It didn't work out so well, but... You twisted around my messages. Your predictions are all wrong. You are a phony. No! No! I mean, what, what, about, what, about, uh, what about Ginny's tomatoes? Ginny's tomatoes! Are you kidding? That was a coincidence. That is the last 
time I ever spent one cent in your arcade, you phony! No, 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 it's the machine! It's, it's inhabited by an evil spirit. I, El Schemo, I never predicted. really believed it anyway. Yeah, I knew he was a fake all along. No, wait, wait! Who are you going to believe? Wait, who are you going to believe? Some silly talking machine or the great and powerful El Schemo? Oh, yeah, I you know, this wasn't all Schemer's fault. What do you mean? Well, none of those people had to do what Schemer told them to do. They did it on their own. That's right, Dan. They did, but they should have known better than to listen to everything that Schemer said. Sometimes people don't use common sense. And speaking of common sense... Let me find it. Just trust me. Let me know. Schemer! Are you going to apologize to everyone? Yes. Apologize? El Schemo? <laughs> The train is here. Let's go. Oh, no, wait. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's yeah, you should be right out of town. town you know? No, wait, wait. I've got to predict something good for you. Stay around. I have some good news for all of you. Oh, something. It is in the future. We all have futures. And of course, you want to see what your future is. So stay with El Schemo. I can't find believe the... I fell for his line of hooey. I've never been so embarrassed in all my life. Jenny, why don't you come back to my place and we'll get embarrassed together. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, I apologize. I'm sorry. Too stay, late. stay. I said I'm sorry. Too late. No, I said I'm sorry. Come on, I said I'm sorry. Please come back. I said I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. Everybody thinks I'm no good. Yeah, well, I wonder why. You think it's because you lied, cheated, and stole their money? Well, that's the reason for everybody to be mad at me. Is it? Okay. Well, Schemer, are you ever going to pull a stunt like this again? No, Miss Jones. Okay. But it was kind of fun while it lasted. I didn't hear that. It is I, the spirit of the machine. I'll come back to haunt you if you ever trick people like that again. <laughs> no, don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't you want me to tell you the future? No, no, no. I'm out of the future business. I'm completely out of the future business. I predict you are going to take a trip. Reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Waiting there for you So much to see, so far to travel So much to learn to know Friends by your side, hopes to hold on so far you'll go to a shining time station 